Welcome to the channel for the future caretakers of resurrected species. Welcome to the Paleo Zookeepers Association. Oh, hello there. Welcome to the Paleo Zookeepers Association. My name is Austin. Elephants. One of the most fascinating and interesting and magnificent families of mammals in the world that ever existed. We have at least three living species on today. Back in the past, there were a whole variety of, of different species of elephants, including the famous uh, woolly mammoth to this very, uh, little, little known uh, elephant. This is the Paleoboxodon, also known as the straight tusk elephant. Now, there are different species of Paleoloxodon within the fossil record, with a couple of them surpassing the largest African elephants, making them the largest species of elephant that ever lived, and even the largest species of land mammal ever. And even surpassing the, the extinct rhino, Paraceratherium. Now, this is actually a very interesting um, other record that this genus of elephant is also known for. For the world's smallest species of advanced elephants, Paleoloxodon falconeri, or the dwarf elephant of Sicily. As mentioned, the dwarf elephant of Sicily, or the Sicilian dwarf elephant, is considered to be the smallest dwarf species of elephant that ever lived, with cows or females standing at a shoulder height of 80 centimeters or two feet and seven and a half inches and weighing just a little over 300 pounds with the with their calves pretty much standing up a, a 33 centimeters or one one foot and one inch of the shoulder height and weighing up to 17 pounds at least for the newly born bulls and as for adult bulls they are they are they are found to be standing at a shoulder height of three feet and two inches tall at the shoulder and weighing between 500 and 600 pounds. As you can pounds. probably imagine, an elephant that is that small, basically around a meter high in the shoulder and basically weigh between three or 600 pounds would definitely be a perfect elephant for small zoos. Maybe smaller to be able to contain them in captivity better, feeding and whatnot. But while they, while their small size would definitely make them relatively easier to take care of in captivity, there will still be challenges of taking care of these little elephants. Just mostly because you gotta remember that while they definitely are smaller, they are still, by definition, elephants. And even without their size, elephants can be very tricky to take care of in captivity. In this video, I will just, I will go through some of these, through the Paleoloxodon falconry, the scientific name for the Sicilian dwarf elephant. First topic we will discuss is the enclosure. With them being smaller than modern day species of elephants, and significantly smaller than that of other Paleoloxodon species, it's definitely safe to say that the minimal enclosure size for these dwarf elephants will be significantly smaller. With their size and weight being similar to that of modern day tapirs, we will use the guidelines for tapirs in captivity as a model for enclosure size for these elephants. Taking this into consideration, we can deduce that for the time being, the recommended minimal requirements for the dwarf elephants should be that their indoor st stalls or indoor space should be at least 10 by 10 or 100 square feet Per elephant and the outdoor enclosure should be at least be at minimum 200 square feet for each elephant now take this assumption with uh, a pinch of salt or at least a grain because this is only based on like estimates from out from animals of similar sizes behavior and other things like that would need to be taken into consideration but until we actually do resurrect these elephants and and study them, these are, this is the best that we this is the best assumption we can do for the moment. 
along with a few other things here and here and there on this video. So take keep that in mind. Along with the size of an enclosure, we also got to know like what are the barriers we need for this enclosure. While they are significantly smaller, I would say that using a, the same kind of uh, barriers used on modern day elephants would probably be for the best. And this will include uh, moats and, and on fencing primarily of solid walls and iron bars. Probably significantly smaller and probably not as strong to keep a to, to keep elephants in, at least sort of modern day elephants, but at least strong enough to be able to withstand a 600 pound bull. Even though it may be a popular idea, I don't think, I don't re recommend using chain link fences to contain these elephants. Because while they are small enough to be able to, in theory, be contained by chain link fences, that they can still have some problems, especially considering that while they're smaller, they are still elephants. And what I mean by that is that they have their trunks, they will try to get their trunks through the, through the, through the holes and if they get them stuck they're gonna panic and accidentally damage their trunks. There's also tusks and we learned earlier that only the males have the tusk and if they try to get their tusk through the uh, chain length then it's gonna be an issue. So I would recommend not using chain link fences for these dwarf elephants. One form of barrier that would definitely be useful for, for these dwarf elephants is electric wires. Now you might now you gotta be uh, careful with this, especially since el elephants have been known to occasionally grab onto electric wire if they if they are not conditioned on dealing with it. And when they grab grab onto it or wrap their trunks around the the wire, the electricity will go through them and they will not be able to let go. So. Electric wire is definitely best to use when it's either containing an elephant, elephants within a very, very large pasture range, or to protect uh, plants that you don't want the elephants uh, browsing on. One form of electric fencing that would be effective in protecting plants from the elephants is hot grass. It's basically a uh, wire that's been that's that's been uh, made to look like grass. That's on a stem that's made of plastic. It's very effective. It's pretty effective on uh, protecting plants from elephants in captivity. So it most likely do the same thing for dwar the dwarf elephants. While I will definitely stand of using solid walls and metal bars to fences to be able to contain these elephants, like we would with modern day elephants, you will obviously need to make some adjustments to them in order to contain the elephants properly. For one, definitely make certain that they are smaller, like probably make the fences like six or seven feet tall. So that that way that way even when the elephants rear up, they won't be they won't attempt to do anything. But also definitely modify the spaces uh, between the bars, not only to to be able to contain the the adults properly, but also to make certain that the calves, if you do breeding, won't be able to crawl out. One idea is that that the bars in the lower part of the fence panel should be should be significantly shorter than those at the top. And to add on to it, probably some woven wire. That way the elephants won't be able to crawl under the fence, especially the calves. On a side note, as we talk about containing the dwarf elephants, Let's do a little quick note on how to transport them as well. When transporting out elephants in captivity, it gets very, their slower size makes it very difficult. You need uh, specialized equipment, uh, you need semi trucks and trailers, uh, you need any large shipping containers in order to transport them. And this can be very, very time lengthy, expensive, and so on. But with dwarf elephants, especially since they are like a meter tall, weigh between three to six hundred pounds. It's definitely possible that, in theory, a stock trailer like this could be able to transport a, a small herd or at least a couple individual elephants. We 
want if you transform them in a stocking tank on a stocking trailer like this I would say probably do this use this kind of trailer when the the, the weather is comfortable and sunny warm but not too warm and the distance is uh, 10 miles or less now with now with transport transport these little elephants while they are definitely smaller than modern elephants they are still elephants so you got to take this into consideration like they're still inquisitive, they still have those trunks, like, if you're going to use a stock trailer like this, you might want to modify it with, like, a plate to be able to make sure they don't use their trunks to try to mess with the latches. And even, and even so, you'll want to definitely want to hook a lock in here to keep you, to either A, keep people from getting in, or B, if you can't be able to, to hook a panel here, keep the elephants, keep the elephants from unlocking it. Now, using a trailer like this would probably be a, probably a better a, a better deal for you, for you. For one, it's pretty much more sealed up and less likely for the elephants to be able to come and reach to the latch. Also, since you could be able to have windows on these, you could be able to transport the elephants in, in comfort during uh, snowstorms or rain and other weather phenomena and and probably with some modifications like hooking like heater or maybe even an air conditioner you could be able to have the elephants ride in comfort especially if it's well over 10 miles thankfully with their small size this could this could definitely make transporting these little elephants very easy in theory but just remember that there are still elephants you still gotta consider that but in theory again it's, it should be much more easier than dealing with modern day elephants Now with making any kind of enclosure, you definitely want them to, the enclosures to be nice. Not just look nice for the public, but also to be nice for the animals. And one of the ways to make them nice, both for visually to the public and uh, comfort wise to the animals, is vegetation. Especially with the grasses, bushes, and trees. Now with elephants, this gets a little tricky. With modern day elephants, they have they have been known to be very destructive of vegetation thanks to their insatiable appetites and foraging behavior. While the dwarf elephants are not exactly as most likely would not be as big as destructive as their larger kin, they could possibly still be very destructive to the smaller plants like grazing and definitely be destructive on small trees and bushes and shrubs so this is definitely something to take consideration any bushes trees or shrubs you want to protect you definitely going to need to use barriers such as electric fencing and perhaps even some large boulders This, in fact, leads us to the next topic in relation to taking care of dwarf elephants in captivity, and that is feeding them and their diet. Much like modern day elephants, the dwarf elephant is definitely a herbivore, and dental microwares on fossilized teeth has shown that this elephant is both a grazer and a browser, so feeding it should definitely be not a problem. As one would expect, hay would definitely be part of the bulk of the elephant's diet. The best hay to go for, at least for the elephants of any variety, is Timothy hay, since it has the right amount of nutritional requirements. Not too high of protein, but has a, a good amount of fiber in it. Even though I said hay would take a bulk of their diet, browse, basically uh, branches and twigs from a trim non-toxic trees is definitely important for the elephants not just for nutrition but also for the dentition as well pelted feed specifically made for wild herbivores both uh, grazing and browsing animals would definitely be a good supplement for the elephant's diet just like how fruits and vegetables are part of an elephant's diet in the wild it should be the same way in captivity and fruit, will be, fruit and vegetables, especially when they're cut up, would definitely be great for enrichment, 
training, and even a special little something that will be mentioned later in the video. If ever possible, providing a paddock of sorts with grass, trees, bushes, and shrubs growing there would definitely be a great way to feed the elephants and also give them some enrichment as well. Along with what to feed these elephants, we also need to know how much to feed them. Now, there are two ways that we can figure this out. First one is look at the animals that are around the same size. While there aren't many animals that are around the same size as these elephants, the one I think would be the best comparison are the tapirs. Since they are literally around, since they tend to be around, um, around a meter tall the shoulder, and they do weigh between the 300 and 600 pounds uh, ratio. So, this in mind, well, what we know about tapir is that tapirs would need to eat up meat, we need to eat between about 65 to um, 80 pounds of food in a single day. So, that is quite a lot of food for such a small animal. That's one way of doing it. But, there's also a second way to do it. Looking at modern day elephants. Even though these dwarf elephants are significantly smaller than their modern kin, turns out that due to the histo histological analysis on their bones has shown that these elephants actually have the same metabolism as modern day elephants, which means that they grow at the same rate, they reach sexual maturity at 15 years old, just like modern African elephants, they can live up to 68 years old, just like modern elephants, and their, and their gestation rate is actually similar to that of elephants, which is about 22 months. So which means that they have the same metabolism. And with this in mind, we know that elephants, we need to eat between 4 or 6% of their body weight a day. So if we take that consideration, and then we do the between 300 to 600 pounds of, pounds of, of these animals, we would definitely say to say that, it will, that they will need, that with this in mind, they will need to eat between 19 and 33 pounds of food a day, which... If it's accurate, it would definitely be more plausible considering that these dwarf elephants have that small size so they could be able to make do with the resources on their island ecosystem. Now, either of these numbers could be true, we just need to do some more research about it. But if it's true, then not only would we be able to know how to feed them in captivity, but this could be a good model to use for grazing units if you want to have them grazing out in pasture. Along with feeding them, we also need to get some ideas on how to feed them. And this actually leads us to enrichment. For remember, while these elephants are small, they are still elephants. Which means that they need a lot of enrichment in order to keep them happy. And there are several ways that we can enrich them, both with food and even without food. One form of enrichment would be puzzle feeders. Basically, that it would feed the animals, but they will have to work for their meals. There are def there are varieties made for elephants and horses, though the ones made for elephants could probably be made smaller for the dwarf elephants. So that, so that the ones that are hanging hanging up can can replicate the elephants uh, browsing on trees and make them work for their snacks there. And then there are puzzle feeders that don't get hung up. And they're the kind of variety that animals could kick around, roll around, or even lift up and carry it away. Like this, like this little hay, fe hay uh, puzzle feeder here. That's for horses. It could be used for dwarf elephants as well. Now, enrichment doesn't have to just include food. It could be multiple ways that would entertain the animals. And you definitely want it to be very diverse. Because, like I mentioned before in the, many times in this video, while they are small, they are still elephants. They're very, very intelligent social animals. And they definitely need something to keep them enriched. And there are different ways you could be able to do that. Back scratches, or opportunity to be able to scratch themselves against something, would definitely be both enriching for the animal, but it also will help them with skin care as well. Giving the elephants an opportunity to bathe, whether in water or mud, is definitely good for their enrichment and for their skin care. 
This could be as simple as providing a pool of water, a mud, a mud pile, to even an automatic shower system, like illustrated here. Even something as simple as a large ball or a barrel can be a great enrichment item for these little elephants. Those are just a few examples to different kind of enrichment items that these el that you can give these elephants. But you also got to remember that even though they're small, they are still elephants. They still are very intelligent. So, by enrichment items, well, enrichment wise, you gotta get, be very diverse and make sure you have a never make sure you repeat it too often because they can get bored very, very easily. And speaking of their intelligence, just like with modern day elephants, it's most likely they will have close family bonds and units. So, when you're exhibiting these these dwarf elephants, best to have it as a family, a close-knit family group. You have the matriarch, who is the peacekeeper, not the enforcer like people often mistake him to be, along with their aunts, sisters, daughters, rel just like a relatives in general. The bulls, the bulls will most likely get kicked out, either living alone or in bachelor groups, and only come with the females when the females are are in heat. So these are some things you gotta consider when improving improving the mental health for these little elephants. Now we have come to the part of the video that I'm pretty certain a lot of you who have been waiting for this video are very curious to know about the concept of the elephants in like a petting zoo sort of situation. Now this is now many of you have definitely been waiting for like these elephants in a petting zoo environment and me to talk about them. And that's how I initially started when I did, when I was planning for this video. But then, more and more I did some studying of both these elephants and their living relatives, more and more I sort of realized that these elephants in a petting zoo environment is not going to be exactly as, uh, easy to do, do as like a petting zoo for like uh, ponies, goats, sheep, and other livestock like that. For several reasons. One, even though they are small and probably more easily manageable than their wild counterparts, they are still wild, so there anything can happen. Another is that, again, like I mentioned many times in this video, even though they are small, they are still Elephants. Elephants can get very sensitive to situations. They're very inquisitive. And not and this brings up a whole set of challenges compared to petting a cow or a horse. It can be done, it can be done. But there will be some guidelines that would need to be followed if you're able to do this properly. If you're able to have these uh Paleoloxodon falconry or dwarf elephants in a petting zoo situation, one of the first things that will probably most likely be done is that it will be most likely be cows that will be into the petting situation. And probably with their calves as well. I would definitely not recommend bringing the bulls into the petting situation. Primarily because of A, they have tusk. They're the only gender that has tusk. And tusk can be very detrimental to to the guests or to anyone, just like horns would be. But even if they don't have the tusk, there is always the chance that, like modern day elephants, the bulls would go into mus, which is a time, which is a, a moment when testosterone surges through the bull system, making them very non aggressive and unpredictable. So it would definitely not be a good idea when this happens. So, yeah, definitely I recommend not bringing bulls into the petting situation. Another rule that you definitely want to have is there to be a barrier between the elephants and the guests when you're doing the petting zoo situation. This is because that even though they are significantly smaller than modern day elephants, they are still an animal that weighs between three and 600 pounds. And that is still pretty large. Mind you, this is... This, this weight class is bigger than even lions and tigers. And this is pretty close to the to the weight range of that of grizzly bears. So, 
Yeah. And even tapirs that reach around this same size, even they can be pretty devastating to a human. So, regardless of their cute stature, you definitely want a barrier between them and the guests. Now, when you actually do uh, bring guests to, for the petting session with these elephants, there are a couple things you need, that would definitely, there are a couple more things that definitely need to be addressed. One, make sure there's always at least one or two, probably better, two, zookeepers or the staff members that are there and present because anything can happen with these animals and that way they could be able to know like tell the guests when to back off or anything like that also this is going to be directed to the guests there there are some things that they're the guests are going to have to leave behind and not have because just like they're small but they're still elephants and elephants are very inquisitive I like they always uh sniff around, snoop with their trunks, and they can accidentally grab something and you'll never be able to get it back. One of the things I definitely want to do is uh, take uh, not have hats because they might actually take the hat off and run off with it or even eat it. That has happened to some circuses. Also, some things like this um, name tag here definitely need to be taken off because they can grab it and rip it. And this will even include to uh, jewelry like Rings, bracelets, and earrings. Whether they're the, the loop variety or even the stump variety. They can see that and they're curious. They, and they will most likely wind up pulling and probably even rip it off. So definitely want them to get to get rid of that. Also, if they have like breast pockets or anything like that, they might want to empty those pockets because I guess the elephants would definitely want to sniff snoof in there. Also, like... With vests, with, for example, like vests, you're going to be careful. You either need to put them away, or if you have them, you're definitely going to have to empty the pockets or at least zip it up because little elephants might get, might get snoopy about it and they might try to grab and pull it away. So you definitely want to watch out for that. Now, even with all this in mind, it's most likely you're probably not going to have the guests to be able to actually pet these elephants because. Like I said, they're te they could be temperamental, flighty, and they can probably grab the guest's hands and pull them. So that would probably be too much of a risk. But there are ways you could have the guests positively re interact with these elephants. One is that on a hot day, you can you can have the guests spray water on them, give them a lovely bath or shower. Another would be the hand fe feed them. Now, mind you. The guests are not the guests should not be allowed to bring food from outside the zoo or even from outside the enclosure to the elephants. Any, any kind of hand feeding you want want them to do, you have to provide the vegetables themselves. Well, fruits and vegetables. And there are definitely some food that would definitely be great for these little elephants. One of the snacks that you can give the guests that they can feed the elephants are the greens. It could be kale. Uh, cabbage or romaine lettuce as you see here. So giving the elephants uh, leafy greens leaf by leaf would definitely be a good snack for the guests to give them. Fruit like apples would definitely be good snacks for the guests to give the elephants. Other types of fruit can work as well such as uh, bananas, uh, pears, watermelons. Oh elephants are known for loving watermelons. But it'll probably be best to cut up the fruit into smaller pieces to make it easier for the elephants' mouths. And it would definitely be easier for little kids to be able to hand feed them. Vegetables, especially root vegetables like carrots, would definitely be a good treat for the elephants. You can either cut them up small like, like, the, like they are shown there, or cut them up long ways. And other vegetables will be useful, will be very good too, like zucchini, broccoli, and so forth. Basically, basically make certain that you know what your elephants like, and you must also make certain that the elephants have access to a large diversity of snacks in order to enrich their lives and make sure they have all the nutrition that they need. Taking all this in mind, but also making certain that you know your elephants and you also make certain that the guests will be respectful, I would definitely say that 
taking these little elephants in a petting zoo setting would probably be done very positively. Every species, whether extinct or alive, is always going to be able to bring out their own unique set of challenges when they're brought into captivity. Dwarf elephants definitely no exception. The smaller size would definitely make several of its aspects significantly easier. Like, I can imagine a dwarf elephant doing well in a small zoo, or even a boutique zoo. But, they would still have their own set of challenges, like their intelligence, their social structure, amongst others. But, I definitely think that since we, since we improve so much on how to take care of elephants today, I definitely have no doubt that if we ever resurrect the dwarf elephant, we can definitely take, make it definitely make certain that it has a really good life and succeed in doing so. Special thanks to artists Keenan Taylor and Samir Prehistorica. Thanks to Keenan Taylor, he, his commission was able to help this video come to life. And a special thanks to Samir Prehistorica for giving me permission to use his artwork. Check him, check his place, his page out on DeviantArt. He has a lot of really good art. There's a link to his DeviantArt page in the description box down below. Also, a special thanks to my patrons on Patreon. Your support goes a long way. And also a special thanks to my lovely fiance, who has given me all support and even helps me with filming when I'm when I make these videos. I love you. I love you, honey, and wait, can't wait to have a, a future with you. Also, a special thanks to HMJ Zoo and Theme Park Design for giving me permission to use one of the photographs of one of their products. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you all have a grand day. Adios!